Hey, welcome back to Tiny Ness. Jake here. Uh, we've been meaning to make an update video for a while now, but there's a few reasons that we couldn't. And in the meantime, though, I've made some extra progress on what I've been working on and want to show you guys, which I'm pretty stoked about. Uh, it's the whole automated, computer-controlled, smart uh, system for the tiny house. So let me show you what I got going on here. If you've been following us for a while, you'll know this already, but I just wanted to mention it again because now that I'm really getting into the nitty gritty of it, um, I'm really feeling the uh, how intense it is, um, but it is really satisfying uh, when I get something working and it's really fun and interesting to, to learn all this stuff. Um, and, uh, and so what I'm trying to say is everything about this is DIY from scratch. Um, you know, there's some brands out there, just off the top of my head, I can think of like Nest and uh, Philips Hue for lighting control. Um, and I know there's a whole bunch more out there now uh, that make products for uh, lighting control or um, thermostat control, very, various types of smart uh, home control. Uh, and so there's none of that here. This is all sourced from scratch. Uh, I've been, you know, getting different components, different sensors, little lighting drivers and everything that are compatible with an Arduino uh, microcontroller. And then I'm also writing all the code myself, uh, often having to sort of, you know, look up information on each component and figure out how to talk to it and everything. Um, so it, it's all 100% from scratch. So I've got a couple pretty cool things working now, and I wanted to just show you what I've got. Um, first of all, I sort of did some work cleaning up the look of this uh, control cabinet uh, by putting a latch on it so it's hold, held nice and closed, uh, darkened the, the hinges on the left side, and then also put a little plate to cover uh, you know, the, the perimeter around a little screen that's mounted from the back. So it actually is pretty much done in terms of uh, just f finishing the visuals of it. Uh, and I'll show you a close-up of this LCD uh, right now I have it programmed to show me the current um, power draw in, in, in current, in amps, uh, from the power supply that is currently feeding everything. There will be two supplies uh, eventually, but right now during testing I've just got the one going. And then it also, just for my own uh, sort of debugging purposes, shows me the, the time in milliseconds uh, that the code is taking to, to run through the entire um, program. I'm likely going to add a couple buttons just below the screen that will do things like uh, toggle from one screen to the next, assuming there's more information that will, then will fit on a single screen. Uh, and then it could also get really fancy down the road and have buttons that can actually affect things, you know, send a command into the um, Arduino, such as, you know, change the thermostat um, setting. Basically, this will be uh, the thermostat and there's also a humidist humidistat like it will uh, detect the humidity and can control when the dehumidifier comes on that kind of thing if there is any sort of user input it will it will happen here but anyway uh let's open this up and i'll show you what i've got hooked up so far now i actually just finished filming quite a lengthy explanation of this that will be part of a full-blown episode once once it's all done and we've got a bunch of footage of sort of the the process um so there's a lot of me talking and giving uh, extreme detail, which uh, I hope you're okay with if you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. Um, but uh, so I'm not getting into crazy amounts of detail right now. Um, just give a give an overview. And I also wanted to point out that you know this this is totally a mess right now in terms of uh, it's I'm gonna tidy up all the wiring. You know, these bundles and everything, is they're all going to get trimmed down and terminated, and I'm, I'm hopefully going to make it look really nice when it's done. Um, but despite how it looks, everything has been carefully considered and is safe by way of um, correct, correctly sized fuses. So I've got some really dinky wires here that are fused very, uh, at very small values so that um, nothing is going to uh, overheat or, or burn out. Because, um, you know, obviously full electrical systems like power systems um, are extremely important. I'm, I'm an electrician, so I have lots of experience with, I mean, pretty much your whole job as an electrician is to make things safe and consider every uh, angle 
uh, of something that uh, could go wrong in terms of a fire starting from from power. Um, and this is no different. Like even though this is just 12 volts and in some case five volts, uh, there's still plenty enough energy, if not fused appropriately, to um, create enough heat energy to, to start a fire. And also this is um, a fire re uh, resistant paint that's on here. And everything's also stood off uh, as additional measures beyond the fact that it's also fused and that these power supplies have their own built in um, like overheating and over uh, overload protection and whatnot. So I'm gonna zoom in down here a little bit, but I just want to point out that uh, I'm just about to terminate all this lighting wiring. Uh, this is the power supply that's gonna be for that. This is the power supply that's currently f connected to everything, but it will be separated, you know, lighting and non-lighting stuff. Um, there's also the back of the LCD here, and I've just got some simple, uh, I'm using CAT6 cable for a lot of the little um, sort of data connections. So I've got that running down into the Arduino uh, down there. So now let's look at this area. So right here is the brains of the operation. This is the Arduino board and it's an Arduino Mega, which is just a bigger type that has a lot more input pins, which I need for all of the push buttons that are around the house, which um, will send commands to the board uh, to control the different lighting strips uh, and different lighting zones. And all those buttons are gonna be on the ends of these Cat6 cables, which are terminated here. And you'll see that I've got uh, you know a couple wires connected here, and that's because we do actually have a pair of buttons controlling a single light strip, which is actually lit up by this driver, um, this little board here, uh, in the bathroom. And I'm going to end this video with a demonstration of how it's functioning. So I did prototype this just like on the table, these components just sitting out with a little light strip, you know, connected. Uh, and I programmed it and made sure that I could, that this was possible, that I could make this happen. Um, and so that was one thing, but it's, it's another to actually have it wired up to the in-wall wiring and functioning because um, the whole point is that you know it, it will act like uh, it'll be intuitive you go into the bathroom you push the button and the light turns on you don't even think about it and so that and that's actually happening now in the bathroom which is really um which is really awesome so that's pretty much all of this stuff down here uh other than this is a usb connection that goes through a conduit to the com to my computer um, and that was planned from the beginning so that I could have access to a connection uh, in here because I always knew that the Arduino would be here. I can code in there without you know, having to run some wire out in the open. It's all hidden. Uh, and then this little board is, you can probably see it's got a five on it. Uh, so this is a voltage regulator that's adjustable. So we have a 12 volt power supply. Um, the light strips themselves run on 12 volts, our furnace runs on 12 volts, our water heater runs on 12 volts, I've actually got a dehumidifier that runs on 12 volts that I've got hooked up as well, um, but the Arduino runs on 5, and you can run it off the USB, uh, you can actually run 12 volts straight into the Arduino, and then it does its own regulation, but it, the amount of power you can put through this tiny little circuit board is very limited, and since we might have a bunch of sensors, like there's going to be a motion sensor outside that will light the outside lights up when you walk in. There's gonna be temperature and humidity sensors. And I bought a whole bunch of other sensors, um, feeling really ambitious about what I might wanna sort of try and integrate into the system. So, uh, you know, when I was making all those decisions, I decided to get a separate dedicated board that will output five volts that, um, you know, this can handle up to, I think three amps, which is tons uh, when you're talking about the, in milliamps for these devices, but um, like I said, the board, the Arduino board might not be able to handle what I'm going to put on it. So anyway, that, that's what this is. It's basically a dedicated 5 volt supply. And then I guess the one other thing that's relevant here is this little current sensor. So uh, the 12 volt supply that's currently powering everything, all of the current runs through the little uh, terminals here on the board before it goes to the fuse block and branches out to everything. And then these little control wires uh, basically send data to the Arduino about the current that's flowing through here. And that's one of the main things I have showing on the LCD right now. Another thing that we've done recently that's relevant to all this is that this dehumidifier originally came with a power cord that has a little, you know, power brick on it. Uh, and then the cord end just plugs into a normal 120 volt uh, outlet. And sometime as far back as 
I think the spring even, uh, that brick started making a, a noticeable whining noise and was getting quite hot and was honestly making me quite nervous. So I uh, had it on, I unplugged it and had it unplugged um, until very recently when the weather started getting more wet and uh, you know we wanted to get this back up and running. And so, you know, we do have this dehumidifier, a little baby version of it, and I knew that it ran on 9 volts, and so I always thought that, you know, we have 12 volt, uh, 12 volts available, but that I would need to do some kind of uh, step down to, to power that. But it turns out that this bigger unit runs off 12 volts. So uh, we have the wiring actually coming up here. This, we were in, you know, I'm up on top of the, um, the top shelf of the kitchen here and it was intended that the dehumidifier would go here and since this one like I said runs on 12 volts and we have 12 volts and wiring and everything basically just uh, and I have to clean up this wiring again this is not the best thing to just have wire nuts just loose like this but in the interest of getting it going and verifying that this is uh, gonna work I basically just cut that brick off and tied straight on to the 12 volts and hooked the other end of this in the control panel to the power supply and this uh, works perfectly and in fact it was making a bit m more of a unstable noise when it was running off of that old power brick I think because the power supply from it was unstable and when I first hooked this up and turned it back on the, the fan turned on nice and smooth so that was a nice little bonus to get this up and running, uh, connected directly to our 12 volt supply and using the in-wall wiring. All right, as promised, I'm gonna do a demonstration of the push buttons and the lighting strip that we do have installed in the bathroom. If you are familiar with the layout of our bathroom, you'll probably have guessed that I'm sitting on the toilet right now. Don't worry, I'm fully clothed. I'm just trying to get back as far as I can to get uh, everything in the shot. And actually, as an aside, um, I'm not sure if we've, uh, shown this before but uh, we sort of gave up for now anyway on having a physical door for the bathroom and just have this curtain which is working pretty well but it of course blocks out you know any light that could be coming in from the rest of the house which was already very minimal just due to the nature of the way the bathroom is kind of a nook and how we don't really have proper lights uh, set up just like a lamp in the you know lamp down that way and then over this way is the kitchen and so in the meantime, we've been using this little solar light, which is sort of like a camping type of uh, product. And uh, it probably doesn't look that bright because I've got the brightness of the camera sensitivity down quite a bit, but uh, it's, it's bright enough to light up the whole room at night. And we basically just leave it on the windowsill and it charges via solar. And uh, we've just been gotten really used to using that, but it is a bit of a pain in comparison to having like a proper light. So. Without further ado, uh, I'm going to demonstrate that. So this has two settings, a high and a low, and some other locations like the um, living room, we might have up to three uh, settings. So basically, if you press the top button, when you let go, it will turn on the LED strip to full brightness uh, with the white color, and I can adjust this, obviously, very... Um, I can fine-tune it uh, very specifically. And if you press the button uh, for the setting that you're already on, it will turn off. And if you press the other button, it will go to the low setting, which is a very dim red, which is supposed to help um, to prevent like waking you up if you have to pee in the middle of the night, but you need a bit of light to see what you're doing. And again, if you press the same button as the setting that you're on, it will shut off. And at any point, you can switch between the two and you can see that it's fading uh you know it, it fades up fades down and it also fades between so if i you know if it's part way faded to there and i press the other one it'll fade back so i've managed to get the code pretty robust to um account for any sort of situation and i also recently uh figured out how to like let's say i press this button uh, first of all, nothing will happen until I release a button. But if I say I press the other button while I'm still holding the top one down and then I let go of that, basically whatever button I was last pressing when I let go is the setting that will 
take effect. I'll also mention that these buttons do have a little ring light on them, and I don't have that set up right now, but eventually when I get everything fine-tuned and, and connected, the plan is that whichever setting you're currently on, the corresponding uh, ring will be lit. So right now I'm in the low setting, so the low uh, button would be lit up, and when you press it again to turn it off, it would turn off, and if I press this, that would light up. If I switch to this one, that would turn off and this would light up, and so on. So whichever, um, like at a glance, if you're not familiar with the settings, you, you can see which uh, which button is is relevant to whatever setting you're on. So I guess this all might sound a bit complicated, but the idea is to make it intuitive in the sense that even if I didn't explain anything to someone and they, they come in here and they look at this, they'll try something, probably the top button, they'll see the light turn on and this will be illuminated. Either they'll instinctively press the same button again because it's lit up and they want to you know, turn it off, or they'll hit the bottom one thinking that turns it off and then they'll see that that becomes lit again and then they'll hit it again and you'll figure it out very quickly, probably within the first, you know, attempt of, of using it. And obviously I like talking about this and explaining it in such detail because I've put a lot of thought into this and sort of, you know, come up with this from scratch in terms of, you know, what buttons to use, how to wire it, and how to code it, and how to make this work the way that it does, and all the rest of it. And I am actually experiencing the occasional bug with this where, um, you know, it it does, it picks up an extra button press and stuff, and uh, I, I think it's something to do with the physical nature of how the wire is long, and anyway, I might put a call out to, uh, uh, if I can't solve it myself, I might ask for some help from, uh, from any of you viewers that are particularly tech savvy in this uh, area. And the last thing I'll point out is that we are going to have uh, a second strip, a corner strip on the other side. You can actually see up there the wire that's sticking out, and over here, it's probably a bit dark, but uh, there's a little box there that I've sort of brought the, that wire into and done the connection to the light strip and then mounted it all like that. So on this side, we'll be doing the same thing, but I'm waiting because we're probably going to tile uh, in behind the sink and then cut that uh, light strip down so that it meets up with the tile. So we need to kind of figure that all out. So thanks for uh, joining me for this update. Catch you later.